Okay, on this video, we want to talk a little bit about the atom energy and how it is the basics of life. Our other thing is this can get a little technical. It does get technical trying to understand what is energy, especially what's called electromagnetic force. But I want you to feel comfortable. There was this fellow named Albert Einstein who figured out how to measure energy. But he went to his deathbed not understanding exactly what energy was. So we're in very good company. If this gets confusing, then don't worry. It's confusing to practically every human on the face of this planet. But let's take a beginning look at it just so you will have an understanding of when we talk about healing and electromagnetic force, electrons, electron supplementation and redistribution, you have the basics of what is life. Let's start off here. I want to draw you a little picture. Let's, let's see what an atom looks like. We got a little atom right here. Or we got the nucleus, and that's going to have our proton in it. That's going to have our neutron in it. Protons, we know, have a positive charge. And then I've probably talked to you in one of my other videos. That first little ring, we're going to have an electrode circulating it. And I've talked to you that if that's the size of a pecan, this is about five miles away. And then we're going to have another ring, and this is this atom is only going to have two rings. Now, the most electrons you can get into this outer ring will be eight. That's just part of physics. But in this situation, what we want to do, and when I show you these pictures, one of the things I want you to understand, because it gets very important about energy, is I'm actually showing you an electron. Now, we think about it, and I will tell you, like, the way it works in nature, if this electron is turning counterclockwise, this electron is turning clockwise. And this is concerned with the amount of energy that is there. Now, I'm giving you basically a two-dimension view. Truthfully, here's your electron. It can have an axis there. It can have an axis here. Here, it can have an axis coming from the back and coming through. The ability to rotate, and that affects energy, is within. So electrons spin opposite each other. Without getting real technical, there's a thing called singlet and triplet state that Albert St. Gorky did a lot of work on. Sometimes you can change a spin. It's very, very rare. And sometimes you can make an electron change orbits. But in this particular one, let's go ahead, let's go to a third elect. So I want to do a negative charge there, electron, 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 electron. There, 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 there. Now I've got seven. Whoop, full, eight. That's it. Can't get any more. So now we have to go to another orbit that's called the valence, V A L E N C E. Now, here I'm going to make a little change with you because it is hard to understand electromagnetic force. So let's do something different that may make it a little simpler. This outer orbit is only going to have three electrons in it. And those are going to be our electrons. Now we know these are all negative. So you got negatives pushing here, positively protons pulling, now, what is force? If you look at those three electrons right now, basically you have mass, and electron mass can be measured. It's a speed to give it energy. But in this particular setting, we have metal mass, and we have gravity pulling down. So, what is this force? And this is simple. You had it probably preschool because it was fun to play with. When an electron starts getting near another electron, watch what happens. Look, we're not touching. But look what we're doing. We're moving it away. Now, if we keep doing it, I hope you can see that, we may come near another electron. Uh-oh. Look what's happening. 
That's electromagnetic force. Now the important thing about that is, yeah, we don't understand a lot of things, but if we went to a positive, and let me just show you this, if we went positive, and I put this one through it, watch it, oh, it pulls it. Sounds silly, but inside your body, remember, we have literally millions of atoms. And there's these electrons on the outside. When we apply electricity from internal, and we complete the circuit by putting somewhere else on your body, we put another electron, electrode, we start a massive influx of negative particle matter. Once we start this, you make all sorts of chemical changes occur. Where we are right now is some of those changes that we cause are very beneficial. We're not exactly sure what is detrimental. Now, one of the constant arguments you will hear, and I've heard it since possibly late 70s, early 80s, is we can take electricity, which I've told you about in another video, and we can make tissue grow, be it bone tissue, be it soft tissue, muscle tissue, epidermis. There's all sorts of dermal cells. We can make tissues grow. The major moment of electrical energy that we pay attention to is the moment of conception. And it is the moment of conception in which we trigger, electricity triggers, the replication of cells that later specialize in certain types of cells. And so what we end up doing is through electricity we can bring about a lot of positive things. But our frame of reference is generally healthy cells, healthy tissue, stable atoms, a lack of free radicals. Remember, a free radical is nothing but an electron that is floating around, that's not attached to an atom, and it's wreaking havoc everywhere it can go. It's going to wreak havoc. It's changing. It changes energy levels. And what we have to do with this free radical electron is we have to bring it into its own atom. And we would have another one here to stabilize it. That's what we're trying to do. Now the argument that I wanted to tell you that I hear often, and there's a company called Novacure. And you can look at Novacure now. There's some videos on the MedFacts website. Um, actually, let me put it up right here so that you can click and go see this. Novacure's actually had some patients in which they had a very deadly form of cancer, glioblastoma, brain cancer. There's a lung cancer. And they have used uh, a machine that creates definitely an electrical field and in this video you will see the glioblastoma patient I think has been living for over four years now which is totally unheard of it's like seven months after diagnosis they don't measure five-year survivals one-year survivals because you don't survive this is great but what's interesting is many years ago there was literally a scientist over in Europe, and I forgot which country, but what had happened was here was somebody's lungs. I'm not a good drawer of lungs. And say there is a, let's put it red, make it negative, or make it bad. There's a cancer cell right there. And there's a little one right there. And there's another one right here. And there's another one right here. Well, this doctor literally stuck a needle and I'll let this show the needle. Inside the cell, applied negative, remember, electrons. He took this needle, applied electricity, drove those electrons into the middle of the cancer cell, cancer cells actually, and it died. And when this happened, there was uh, 
happiness that maybe they found something, but that's not a practical way to get rid of cancer. And remember, we don't want to treat, we always want to prevent. That's our option. But people came back to him later and they said, well, wait a minute, we got a problem. You create an electromagnetic field all around here, and there's other smaller cancer cells. Maybe they're going to grow larger because we know we can apply electricity and make healthy tissues grow. Are we not making cancer cells grow? Here's the problem with that logic. The benefits we see are normal, healthy cells and how they respond to electromagnetic force. These cancer cells are not normal. Actually, they are an aberration to life. You can't say aberrant cells will behave the same way normal cells. All I'm saying, as I've told you before, what we're doing is observing research that was done by other people, and we try to see if we have a different take on what we're seeing. Now, this gives you an idea of how an atom works. Now, I will tell you, knocking off the cancer stuff now, that and it can be measured. Each of these electrons has a measurable amount of energy. When you start changing directions, which is extremely difficult, when you move orbits, there's always got to be an energy quotient involved. And that any one time you affect that energy quotient, you affect what the body does with it. In that particular I told you about glioblastoma, and I have read some of the stuff. I'm not an expert. I applaud the company tremendously for what they've done. But part of the explanation I understood was here is the brain. Here is the cancer, the glioblastoma. Electri Here's the skull. Let me use another color for the skull. Here's the skull that's there for a purpose. Now, when you apply electricity, outside there's your electrodes and some electrodes there and an electrode there. There's a layer of skin. Well, I can tell you, electricity looks for the easiest path it can find to get from point A to point B. Let's just say for sake of argument, C and D. Electricity is probably not going to penetrate the skull. If you tried to get it that high, you would harm the patient. But the body reacts to the flush of electrons. The body, through our circulatory system, and remember, the blood-brain barrier is extremely difficult to break through. That's why I like drugs like Avastatin, which has shown tremendous promise and is being used effectively for many types of cancers. But it's also something that can't break through the molecules too big to get through the brain-blood barrier. So electricity is highly unlikely it's penetrating through the skull and going to some area. What is probably happening is we are flushing in these areas an onrush of electrons. This, I mean, they're just all over the place. They're coming in. The body is using them as it does antioxidants. And the body then takes it. Our body is very smart when it comes to, if you give it some stuff, it sort of figures out where it goes. There was a great study by Geronimus on some healthy pigs many years ago, which they used ultraviolet light, and they were uh, ultraviolet C, and they actually tried to make wounds heal quicker. And these were healthy pigs. And it turns out in the study, it did not matter on those healthy pigs whether they applied the light to the, to the wound or if they applied the light anywhere on the pig's body because the pig's body and brain knew where that ultraviolet energy was applied as to what needed to be healed. I think it's the same thing 
with humans. And that's what's going on here. Once you do an onrush of electrons, you supplement. You definitely have to be redistributing because of what you've seen here, the pushing away millions of times a second. The body then takes what it needs, applies it inside the brain, is able to stop or change the pH. Remember, pH, we're talking about acidity, alkalinity, take an electron or give an electron, and it changes it there. And that is what the body is doing in that particular uh, situation. Now, we've already, the reason I wanted to show you that was with electrodes right outside the skin. Remember, there's hardly any water in there. There's hardly any muscle tissue. Skin is basically a resistor to electricity. What you may be affecting an electromagnetic feel like that uh, in this and it's affecting the brain. That may be going on. But that's another one of the positives that's happening with the use of electrotherapy. And one of the reasons we're doing these videos is look at the stuff that's already happening because we're not talking about doing something that we hope might work. We're literally looking at situations that do work and are not harming the patient and is helping the patient overcome illness, overcome injury, and become stronger. Now, why? That is where you and me and the people that are far smarter than, than we are need to look at things and decide what is a new way to look at this. Is, are we sitting on the verge of being able to cure or prevent many, many diseases? Uh, and if so, let's go forth and see if we can't make it work. Thanks for watching this video. At MedFacts, our priority is to educate and inform on topics such as pain relief, sports performance, injury rehab, nutrition, antioxidants, electron supplementation, and electrotherapy. We carry a complete line of electrotherapy devices and accessories including interferential, TENS, ultrasound, muscle stimulators, electrodes, and more. We are excited about being on the cutting edge of electrotherapy research. 